over the top of the on-demand rate. So very significant savings if you are able to make those, those levels of commitments. Uh, and certainly we see a lot of enterprise applications uh, and even the base level of a lot of applications um, able to take advantage of these heavy reserved instances. Um, so do you need to pick one or the other? Uh, and the answer is no. The highly optimized environment, compute environment within AWS would leverage a combination of all um, or at least on demand uh, and at least one type of RI. So what you see here is what we would see in a typical enterprise application in that it really picks up from about 7 a.m. Uh, and then at about 7 p.m. it really drops off. And so what you have is you'd reserve potentially um, four instances, which is that blue line there, um, to get the most off those servers that are pretty much running even all through the night. Uh, then those business work hour RIs, you might purchase the light reserved instances, another five there. Uh, and then you have that those peaks when you're not sure if it's if it's going to be used a lot, if the tool will be used a lot that day or a little. So there is still some level of variability uh, in the application, um, but you can just leverage those on-demand instances there. Uh, and theoretically, you could lay a medium in between if the application uh, could take advantage of that, and you could lay a spot instances on top here as well. Uh, so you can use all business, all the business models uh, at the same time. So I kept talking about those key components that you need to choose when you're purchasing a reserved instance. Uh, and these are the five. So region, um, uh, hopefully a lot of you have started using the Sydney region, which has been around for over a year now. Uh, within the Sydney region, we have two availability zones, um, A and B. Uh, and then there's a, a plethora of instance sizes. So what we're talking about there is the M1 small or the, um, the high memory extra large, uh, or whatever instance types you're using. Uh, the operating system, uh, so Linux, Windows, whether it's Red Hat Linux or, or Free Linux or whatever it may be. Uh, and then finally, uh, VPC or Classic. So what do I mean when I say you select these five things and then um, you can run whatever you'd like on it? It means if, for example, you were to purchase a Linux M1 large in Sydney uh, in Availability Zone A, um, throughout the year, for example, that you purchased it for, that same M1 large reserved instance price could be applied to your mail server, your web server, your database server, uh, your NoSQL database server. It doesn't matter as long as it matches those five things. Now, I mentioned that we've introduced greater flexibility recently. Uh, and the good news is, of these five things, three of them can now be changed um, regularly throughout the lifespan of the reserved instance. So we'll dig into exactly what that means. Changing availability zone uh, and moving from a classic environment to a virtual private cloud or vice versa. Um, so classic to, to the virtual private cloud, um, this isn't uh, all that common at the moment, but it's really for those businesses that have two scenarios where they've either grown up with Amazon uh, and they started in the classic environment because they didn't see the need for the extra networking control. Um, but then they've, they've either matured or they've gotten to the point um, that you know, they're starting to get looked at by regulators and whatnot. So they need to rein in that control. Um, so they're starting the process to re-architect and migrate into a virtual private cloud. You can still start taking advantage of lower prices now because you can move them between classic to VPC. The other environment is where a business might have launched, uh, say, a website a completely public website with no customer data and they've just said put it in classic because we don't want to deal with even the limited networking muck that is VPC uh, or they did it before we made that a lot easier to manage. Uh, so you can now comfortably start reserving. Uh, now the availability zone one is something that I, I am more excited about. It's the ability to move between um, say A and B in the Sydney region, your reserved instance type. Um, there are different reasons why you might do this. Um, it could be that uh, you start your application and initially you run it all in a single data center because either you haven't had a conversation with, with one of our architects to explain that it's potentially just as easy to run um, your load balance service across both data centers. Um, uh, or you're splitting up your servers and, and now you've got more RIs and you want to increase the availability by running across zones. So what you can now do is very easily move from A to B, from B to A, 
uh, and so forth as many times as you want throughout the duration um, of your reserved instance term. Um, so I guess another example is potentially uh, you're running two applications. They both don't need availability, but you put them in different availability zones and they're independent. Um, and one of them you get rid of it because it's not getting used anymore. Maybe you're an agency um, and you no longer need um, that website up for the company. You can reapply that if you're running another um, customer's website in the other availability zone. So even more exciting and something that we heard everybody crying out for was the ability to change the instance size. Um, when you purchase an RI, obviously um, what we have is a lot of businesses, as I said, that move uh, a like for like. So they, they haven't re-architected, but a lot of them fully intend to. So they're in a position where they say, we, we want to move now um, because we're going to reduce our costs. And we want to move now because we want to re-architect in the cloud because you have greater flexibility to do that. So what they do is they, they migrate in and they might run everything um, on one single very big server. Um, let's say it's an M1 extra large and you're running the web app and database tier all on a single machine. But the, the hesitation has often been, well, we're going to re-architect so we don't want to reserve. Um, and it's been devastating for me to sit here uh, over the last two years and see these conversations where somebody says, we're going to re-architect. Uh, and then 12 months later, when they could have saved 40%, they haven't gotten around to it. And, and you know, let's face it, people get busy, um, priorities get changed, um, and it's not always the number one priority to re-architect um, for availability if it's performing well. Uh, so what this has allowed us to do is immediately reserve it anyway. Because if you get to a point where you can take advantage uh, of breaking that server up, um, and instead of having it all on a single extra large, you can run it across um, multiple smalls or, or um, one large and four smalls, you can now do it. Which is also beautiful for those that then want to re-architect and move, for example, state out of their web tier so that they can run load balanced across multiple data centers. Um, and so you'd be able to break up, for example, uh, an extra large M1 server into four medium servers to take advantage of availability and increased resiliency and performance, uh, and also naturally reduce the blast radius of any issue um, that your environment runs into. Uh, because if, if something happens to one server in this environment, it's a quarter of as bad as if it runs into an issue in this environment. So uh, what's the fine print? Uh, what are the rules here? Uh, and it's around changing instance sizes. It's all about doing it within the family. Um, so at the moment, unfortunately, you aren't able to use, um, for example, an M1 small uh, and apply it to upgrading to an M1, an M2 um, server. Um, so despite the fact you can see the normalization factor one um, will meet if you get eight of them, unfortunately, we can't do that at the moment. And that's because the price is different. So what is that normalization factor? Um, and I really like this because this can change your thinking of purchasing RIs from thinking about purchasing um, a specific instance type to thinking about purchasing points. So for example, if you approach the M1, M1 family and you purchase eight points in the example before, uh, you've purchased an M1 extra large potentially. Then you get to the point where you can break off your database uh, and split it up. Um, and then you can have much lighter and, and many web tier. So what you might do is you break that eight points up into four points go towards an M1 extra large, uh, an M1 large, uh, and the additional four points go to four M1 smalls. Um, so you're in a position now where you can have that level of flexibility uh, within the AWS cloud. Um, it has to be obviously be the same operating system still. Um, and as I say, you can't change between instance families at the moment. So I won't spend too long here, um, but we do have a reserved instance marketplace, um, which is an opportunity more for you to buy, um, more for you to buy instances. Uh, I know if anybody has looked into us, I'm sure a lot of you have. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, you can only sell a reserved instance if you have a US bank account. But you can see here, if for example, um, you were running a short-term project um, and you go to buy uh, an M1 extra large Linux server in Singapore, you see our tool will automatically bring up um, the fact that there is a third party, um, so another AWS customer selling 
two uh, RIs with four months left on that commitment. All right, so the proposal um, that hopefully a lot of you have in your inbox. If you don't have it, um, feel free to get in touch with me, your account manager, and ask for it. Um, and we'll just get you to provide your account details uh, or email so that we can process that for you. Uh, and so the big thing for me is cost savings do favour the AWS educated. And the difference between a business that's done one reserved instance purchase uh, and one that has done none is hugely significant because the business that's just done the first one understands that it isn't, it isn't a trick. It is Amazon genuinely trying to reduce your bill. And then you can always start looking for ways to optimize that spend and reduce your overall cost. So the proposal that you should have in your inbox, and this is a generic one um, that we, I generated uh, yesterday. Uh, so what I wanna do is step through this